Hey, this is Tim Back for Wrong Sports, and apparently you're in the mood for more terrible teams, so step right up, because if you checked out my last video of the worst college football teams pre-World War II, then you have to see more terrible teams that came after the war. This time of college football was probably the height of popularity around the country. All college-age men were coming home from war and looking to get back into school. Most men that came back from war still had eligibility left, so they showed up to all college campuses a little bigger and and some older than college age, but they were ready to play. This list will be a list of the worst teams from college football from 1946 until 1960. This will only be Division I teams, so no Division II, no Division III. I don't even know if they were around at that time. I'll make another list for worst teams at the lower level later on, so stay tuned for that. Here's a dishonorable mention, a team that didn't make the list. The 1951 Northern Arizona Lumberjacks. They lose to a team on this list, so goody for them. But they were basically a mid-major team at this point, as they played only two games against teams at top-level college football, so that's why I didn't want to put them on this list. But this list is going to go just like my previous list. I'm going to uh, list all the teams in chronological order and tell you where I think they would go. Top 10, top 15, top 5, so on and so forth. Let's start out with 1946. This was the year just after the war ended with the 1946 Idaho Vandals. They are a top 10 worst team. The Vandals were coming into the season off of a 1-8 1945 season. But they played a Navy team twice as well as they played Washington State and Oregon State twice. Uh, this year, though, they played five different teams from the PCC, which is the Pacific Coast Conference, now known as the Pac-12, which was the conference that Idaho was in. And they lost to all of their teams in their conference. They only scored 13 points, and that was in one game. Otherwise, they were shut out in all of them. The team managed to win this year, but over another dreadful team in Portland, who had only two wins, but those wins were over mid-major teams. Their coach this season was also the basketball, baseball, and athletic director at the time at Idaho. His name was James A. Brown, nicknamed Babe Brown. Brown was a high school football coach in Idaho before this time, but he was a much better basketball coach at Idaho than he was a football coach because his two years at Idaho, previous to this, he only managed two wins and he would resign from his football job a day after their final game of the season this year where they lost 13-12 to for Fresno State. That was a club team or a mid-major team at the time. This 1946 Idaho Vandals team, they only scored an average of seven points per game, giving up more than four touchdowns in every single game. We're going to stay in 1946 with the 1946 Kansas State Wildcats. Now, you will hear Kansas State on this list a couple of times because they were really bad. There's a lot of times where Kansas State was bad, but they were really bad after World War II. I'm going to put this 1946 Kansas State team in the top five worst teams. This team this year gave up an average of 26 points per game. They were shut out three times. They never scored double digits, and they averaged four and a half points per game. That is why this is the worst of all the Kansas State teams during this time, and that's tough to do because I'm going to have another Kansas State team come up very soon on this list. This team was only in two games this season. Their first one against Idaho State who were second to last in the conference as they lost by a touchdown in that game, and against New Mexico where they lost by a touchdown in that game. This team would probably tie the other Kansas State team on this list, which I'm getting to right now. This is another top five worst team. This is the team next year, the 1947 Kansas State Wildcats team. They were a little bit worse on defense, but they were a little better on offense. They did score seven points per game this season, but they gave up more than 28 points per game this season. They were shut out twice, but they did score double digits this season, so that's why I'm going to say they were a little bit better than the season previous to this. But yeah, their defense was so much worse than the previous year. This season, they gave up 40-plus points three times and at least 20 points in eight games. They also lost to their in-state rival, the Kansas Jayhawks, worse than the previous two years as they lost this year 55 to nothing. They were shut out the previous year and the year previous to that, too. So this team, this team was bad. They were coached this year by a guy who would never coach again. His name was Sam Francis, and he's in the record books as being the only Kansas State coach to never win a game. And Sam Francis definitely found what he was good at because he became a lieutenant colonel in the army after this. <laughs> 
Next up, we're going out west to a team I would have to say is definitely the worst team on this list. They're a top five team. I'd probably put them number one if I had to. This is the 1949 BYU Cougars. So this team didn't get shut out a lot. They lost all five conference games, 24 to 156, and had their closest game in conference where they lost by two. But they lost to three mid-major teams this season, including a team called Pacific Fleet which I'm guessing was a Navy club team. And they also lost to the other two Utah teams as they lost to Utah and Utah State by a combined score of 60-3. to And Utah and Utah State were second and third from the bottom in their conference. So, yeah, this team was definitely the worst. They did like a round robin of worst teams. This team lost. They also had a dreadful defense that didn't keep them in any games, including games against lower level teams, as they gave up an average of 30 plus points in those games, and they lost most of their games by two touchdowns or more. So that is why this team is at least a top five team, if not the worst. We're going to a new decade, the 1950s, to check in on the 1950 Virginia Tech Hokies. This team is a top five worst team. This team was really bad, like worse than any other team on this list, really, including New Mexico State and Northern Arizona this year, who were also terrible. But those teams won two games apiece, so that's why I put Virginia Tech on this list ahead of those two. This Virginia Tech team didn't win any games, and it wasn't hard to see why, as they gave up an average of 43 points per game, including giving up 60 plus points twice and 40 plus points six times out of 10 games they did score 72 points out of all of their games that's only an average of 7.2 points per game but it was only because they scored 21 points in their first game against the quantico marines who were a mid-major team made up of men on the base and this tech team still lost 61 to 21. Oh, and it didn't get any better for them as they were embarrassed in their next game against their in-state rival, Virginia. They lost 45-6, to and the scores didn't get really better the rest of the season. They would only score double digits in one other game this season, and that was when they scored 12 in a 32-12 loss to Richmond. Pretty sure this Virginia Tech team would have lost to New Mexico State or Northern Arizona this year, so that's another reason why I put them on the list. And we're not leaving 1950 without seeing this top 10 worst team. This is the 1950 Auburn Tigers. This team might be the worst SEC team ever, as they scored only 17 points in conference that year. They went 0-10, 0-7 in the conference. Here's some more fun stats for you. Their two top quarterbacks had negative rushing yards for the season, and they threw for at least 10 touchdowns total. And those stats, especially this early, are hard to come by. So that's why I wanted to mention those stats. This team was shut out in seven games out of 10. They lost to Alabama 34 to nothing, which is their big rival. And their coach this season was Earl Brown, who won three games the last two years total. And he was fired in February after this season. This season was really a gift, though, because it allowed Auburn to hire Ralph Jordan, who led the team to several conference titles, as well as a national title, and they partially named the stadium after him, so something good came from this terrible season, at least. And this next school that made the list is a team that makes a lot of worst teams lists. This is the New Mexico State team of 1951. Don't worry, they will come up on this list again. They are a top 10 worst team. This team definitely could beat another New Mexico State team on this list, but that shouldn't be something to be proud of. They also have a win, but it was against Northern Arizona, who I mentioned in my dishonorable mentions. And beating this team was basically beating a mid-major, so that's why this team made the list over Northern Arizona. This team did average scoring 11 points per game, but that is mostly due to their 48 point performance in their win, and they only scored double digits three more times this season. They were shut out three times, including by a mid-major school, and they were coached this season by Joe Coleman, who coached as a high school football coach in Texas before this job, and he would never coach sports again after coaching here. He would only win two more games next season, but left and ended up managing an athletic supply company, which did a lot better than his team this year. 
And we're not leaving the state of New Mexico for this next team. I said we would be checking in with New Mexico State again. This is a top five worst team. I would say this is even a top three worst team. This is the 1954 New Mexico State team. And you probably have seen this team on list of worst teams because they're really bad too. Uh, this team was coached by a former assistant of another team that show up on this list. He was an assistant on the 1951 New Mexico State team. And I guess when previous coach Joe Coleman retired, Tired from coaching in the summer of 1953. The school didn't have time to look for a coach outside of the school, so they hired the assistant. His name was James Patton. Patton was never a head coach before this, but he did well in 1953 as they won two games. But this year was the worst team in school history, and that's saying a lot since this team already showed up on this list, and they show up on previous lists that I'd done, and they'll show up on future lists. This team lost their first six games by three touchdowns or more, including their first two games, which were in conference against Arizona and Hardin-Simmons by a combined score of 85 to nothing. This team did start to score points after those first two games, but it was mostly due to them playing lower level teams or playing playing a Marines team again. They did start to look better by the end of the season as they only lost by 12 in their finale against in-state rival University of New Mexico, but it didn't save the job of Patton as he resigned around Christmas. And next up, we're going into the Ivy Leagues with a top 10 worst team. This is the 1955 Pennsylvania Quakers, and this team definitely fell from the heights in the 1940s and early 50s. Pennsylvania was actually a powerhouse with several top 10 finishes, including a number 7 ranking in 1947. And they were so good during this time that them and Notre Dame are the reason for NCAA taking over television contracts in 1951 because they signed their own television contract then because they were that good. However, this team got a whole lot worse in the 1950s because in 1953, their legendary coach, George Munger, retired and Penn hired Steve Sebo, a former Michigan State player and assistant. Penn under Sebo did not start well as they lost all nine games in 1954 and continued their defeated streak, which started Halloween 1953 into this season in 1955. You might be wondering why the 1954 team isn't on this list, and well, it's because that team was in a few games and actually scored double the amount of points they did this year. Plus this year, this team, and that was a 7-0 loss to Princeton. Otherwise, they lost by three touchdowns or more and would only always give up 25 points or more in every game but that Princeton game. They would get much better though the next season going 5 and 4, but yeah, this season one of the worst. All right, let's keep it going because we're going down south for a top 15 worst team. This is the 1959 Virginia Cavaliers. This team was coached by Richard Voris, who became coach in 1958 after Ben Martin left to become the head coach at Air Force. They had one win in 1958, and this season they didn't improve as they went 0-10 and, and were not competitive in any game except for one where they lost 19 to 12 to VMI. Otherwise, they lost by four touchdowns or more, and they gave up 40 points or more in five games. They lost by an average of 31 points, by the way. Uh, they would go 0-10 the next season, but they scored some more points and were competitive in more games, so that's why I put 1959 on this list and not 1960. We're headed back to the Ivy Leagues with the 1958 Columbia Lions, and Columbia was a really bad team uh, in the 70s and 80s, but they were also bad here in the 50s because this is a top 10 worst team. Columbia was very good before the war, but after, especially in the decade of the 1950s, they were really bad, and this was probably their worst team. They might have a win, but it was against another team that was a bottom five team that year in Yale. This team was terrible, though, as they were shut out in six games. They gave up an average of 30 points or more in five out of nine games, and they averaged only four points per game. They scored double digits twice. That was in their win against Yale, where they scored 13 points, and against mid-major Buffalo, when they lost 35-14. to This team, really bad. And here's a team nobody talks about, the 1953 Davidson Wildcats. I almost didn't put them on this list. I'm putting them in the top 15, though, because they were 0-9. They scored 52 points all season. Their closest win this season was a one-point loss to Presbyterian, who was a mid-major team at the time. They averaged giving up 33 points per game this season. They were shut out four times. They only scored double digits twice, and they made a vast improvement the next year, going 6-3. and three. 
so at least they didn't stay bad like some of the teams on this list. So there you go, some more bad college football teams you might not have heard of or might not remember or might have never watched because they were that bad. I'm going to have some more terrible teams lists coming up, including another list from the next two decades, and I'm also going to be having a worst college football team from Division Three. some more college football teams that you might not have never heard of. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Sports Wronged. I'm also on Facebook at Wronged Sports, and make sure you check out the playlist to the side for more videos and thanks for hanging out and listening to more terrible teams